Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Statistical Process Control and Introduction to Control Charts Where and when did the SPC start? Dr. Walter Schuhart of Bell Telephone Laboratories developed a theory of control charts in the 1920s. Schuhart organized his research material for a course at Bell Telephone Laboratories. This lecture material became his famous book, The Economic Control of Quality of Manufactured Product, and it was published in 1931. This is the book that is available even today. So what were Schuhart's conclusions? Schuhart concluded that process variation can be subdivided into two components variation due to common causes or inherent variation and variation due to spatial or assignable causes. Schuhart realized and explained that presence of spatial causes of variation can be economically detected using control charts. But how do we select the type of control chart that we want to use? That depends on the type of data. If we have variable data, then we have a choice of X bar and range chart. We also have a choice of X bar and standard deviation chart. You could also plot individual and moving range charts. If you have attribute data and if the sample size is not constant, then we have a choice of P chart or we have a choice of U chart. And if the sample size is exactly constant, we can use NP chart or C chart. Let us now understand the guidelines for selection of control charts. First, determine the characteristic to be charted. The question is, what is the type of data? Is it attribute data? And are we tracking proportion or percent defective? If no, that means we, are, we must be tracking number of defects or defect per units. In that case, we ask a question is the sample size constant? If it is not, we go for U chart. And if the sample size is constant, we can use C or U chart. If we are tracking proportion or percent defective, again, we have to ask, is the sample size constant? If it is not, we use the P chart. And if it is yes, we use the NP or P chart. Now, if we have the variable data, then we ask a question, are they homogeneous in nature, that is like a chemical bath, paint bath, etc. If not, then is the subgroup size greater than or equal to 9? If yes, we must use X bar and standard deviation chart. If not, that means if the subgroup size is less than 9, then we ask a question, can the standard deviation S be easily computed? If it is not, we use X bar and range chart. And if it is yes, we can use actually any, but it is better to use X bar and standard deviation charts. And if you have homogeneous characteristic or if the data is homogeneous, that is chemical bath or paint bath, etc., we use charts for individuals which are known as XMR or individual and moving rate charts. We recommend viewers to watch our video on normal distribution. And recall an important property of normal distribution that mean plus or minus 3 sigma includes 99.73% area or variation. We also recommend viewers to watch our video on central limit theorem which says that when we take random samples of equal sample size n from any distribution and take averages, the averages tend to be distributed normally with standard deviation sigma x bar equal to original sigma upon square root n. Now let us understand the steps in control charting. Define the process and process parameters including trained people, qualified material, tools and fixtures. Identify characteristics to be charted considering importance to the customer and business importance. 
qualify the measurement system and consider selection of the measurement system, measurement system analysis and calibration, decide the charting plan, select appropriate control chart, and start recording and charting, establish control limits after 25 subgroups, analyze for assignable causes. Let us now see an application example of X-bar and range control charting of an application shown in this figure. A company wants to monitor runout of valsit inserts on assembly used in cylinder heads. Cylinder head is a component used in diesel or IC engines. Data is collected every 15 minutes with subgroup size of 3. Data is shown here. Plot X-bar and range control charts and identify out of control points if you observe any. This is a table of constants for control charts. These factors are calculated by statisticians and tables are used to find out constants for particular type of chart and subgroup size. These constants are used to analyze control charts. Download this and other statistical tables from our website www.world-class-quality.com. The red box shows the constant that we are going to use to analyze control charts for X bar and range. Let us now perform the calculations and plot the X bar and range charts on Microsoft Excel. Here is the data. The data is given in the columns X1, X2 and X3. First we calculate the average of each of the subgroups which is X bar. So it is average of the three values. Yeah, so the average of these three values is uh, 37. The range can be calculated on Excel as equal to max of the three values minus minimum of the three values min function. And I copy this formula for all the 25 rows. Now I calculate the grand mean of all the averages so that is equal to average of all the 25 subgroup averages similarly i can copy this formula to calculate the average range that is range bar i just copy these values for convenience and plotting so range bar is here and grand mean is 50.493 and to populate all the rows I just say equal to the upper value and copy those two formulae so that all the rows are populated with these values. Now we calculate the control limits for upper and lower control limits of X bar we use the formula which is shown here in this uh, table. This table can be downloaded from our website www.world-class-quality.com. It's also available on many other websites. Upper control limit X bar is X double bar that is grand mean plus the factor A2 into range bar and A2 factor depends on the subgroup size. For the subgroup size of 3 which is here the A2 uh, factor is 1.023. So I calculate the upper control limit X bar which is equal to the grand min plus A2 factor is 1.023 star range bar is 23.32 yeah and the lower control limit is grand min minus the same factor A2 1.023 star R bar and I can copy these two values for all the 25 rows yes because the control limits are going to be same for all the points so now we calculate the control limits of range and the formula for the range control limits is given by uh, yeah central line is of course x double bar and range bar and 
the upper control limit of range is d4 r bar and the lower control limit of range is d3 r bar where d4 and d3 factors are dependent again on the subgroup size so for subgroup size of 3 d3 is 0 dash means 0 and d4 is 2.574 so there is only upper control limit which exists and the lower control limit will be 0 for this so lower control limit for range is 0 for subgroup size of 3 upper control limit is factor d4 2.574 star range bar so i copy these two values and populate the table so we have made all the calculations and we are now ready for plotting so we now plot the x bar r chart so we now plot the x bar chart first for that we first select the time column because we want to stamp it by time press the control button select the x bar column which shows all the subgroup averages and then the grand mean uh, and upper control and lower control limits of x bar and if i use the recommended charts yeah excel directly gives us a nice recommended chart which is here and we can see that this is the control chart for averages Yeah, this is the control chart for averages. This is the upper control limit. The yellow one is the lower control limit. And the middle line is the grand mean. And the individual values here are subgroup averages. Now I can change the fonts and colors and everything that, that is all possible on Excel. That uh, we can do. The next part is to plot the range control chart. For plotting the range control chart, again I select the time, press the control button, select the range, the range bar and then UCL and LCL range. LCL range will be obviously 0 and say recommended chart. Okay, this is the range chart. So we have plotted both the charts. We have to see this one above the other. That means first we have to uh, align the charts by the x-axis. And these are supposed to be seen together. Now for the interpretation of charts, first we must interpret the range chart, whether the variation is in control. The range chart stability indicates whether the variation is in control. And the x-bar chart stability indicates whether the average is in control and stable. So I have done some little bit of reformatting on the control charts like making the control limits red and giving titles etc. And then copied and pasted uh, on uh, PowerPoint. So the upper one is an X bar chart and the lower one is range chart. And you can see that uh, they are aligned by the time. Now let us understand the various interpretation rules to detect out of control points. The first rule is a point is beyond control limits on either side on any of the control charts. On the X bar chart, this shows that the process mean has shifted. On the range chart, if you find that a point is above the upper control limit, it means that variation has increased. On the other hand, if you find a point below LCL lower control limit on the range chart it shows reduced variation this may actually be a better situation but still we must investigate the reason for any assignable cause if it is an improvement we should standardize if it is a deterioration or a special cause which is resulting in shifting of the process or increased variation we must investigate the reason for that and take corrective action so that it doesn't occur again. Rule number two is for runs. Seven points in a row above or below the center line shows a run. This indicates that the process mean has shifted up or down in case we observe this on the X bar chart. In case this is observed on the range chart, it means that the process variation has increased or reduced 
depending on whether you see it above or below the center line. Rule number three, seven points in a row, all increasing or decreasing is called a trend. So this indicates a trend. This could be due to tool wear, change in concentration of a bath in case of some plating or some chemical processes, drift in measuring instruments, etc. Rule number four is 14 points in a row alternating up and down. That means there is a possibility that there is a continuous adjustment of the process resulting in increased variation. So we can consider this like hunting or unstable process. This may be a result of over adjustment as it is sometimes called in statistical quality control. Rule number five, two out of three consecutive points beyond two sigma zone on the same side of center line. So the two sigma zone is shown in pink color here. So in the first case, out of the three points, two points are seen in the pink zone and the arrow is shown here. Similarly for the second example, it is on the lower side. Rule number six, four out of five points greater than one sigma zone away on the same side of center line. The one sigma zone is shown in, uh, in white color and the pink color shows the remaining zone. So four out of five points are beyond one sigma. That is what is seen here. Rule number seven, 15 points in a row within one sigma zone from the center line on either side. This is sometimes called hugging the center line. In such a case, the rain chart also will show reduced variation. This is desirable for a process if actions have been taken to reduce variation. This is an example of good spatial causes. However, it can sometimes happen due to reduced sensitivity of measurement system and we should be careful and investigate and ensure that it is not because of the measurement system. Rule number eight, eight points in a row more than one sigma from center line on either side. The above figure shows such a case wherein you can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So this point is marked with a blue color which shows out of control point here since it is on either side. Some of these rules which we have discussed, these are difficult to apply by only observing the control chart, especially for the shop floor operators. However, most of the modern softwares help in detecting the presence of special causes. Now observe the charts and identify the points for special causes. It's pretty easy in this particular case. You can easily observe on the rain chart that point at 11.30 a.m. is out of control above the upper control limit and the second point is on the x-bar chart at 13.15 which is again above the upper control limit. Once the points are identified then we must investigate for the reasons of such assignable causes. While investigating, we can consider tool wear, tool breakages, change of materials, change of operators, change of measuring equipment, equipment condition, and external factors such as voltage fluctuations, temperature, humidity changes, vibrations, etc. But these could be very industry specific and these are only examples. We must investigate the reason for our own and particular process. Once the reasons are identified, we must take action to eliminate the assignable causes so that these will not recur. And if we are able to do that, then we can omit these points for the purpose of calculation and recalculate the control limits, ignoring the subgroups corresponding to the assignable causes. After recalculation of control limits and no assignable causes are observed, the limits can be referred as trial control limits. Charting should be continued now to assess stability of the process on a continued basis. Control limits should be recalculated periodically such as every week, every month or when assignable causes are seen. 
so recalculation is also necessary if assignable causes are detected and later such points are omitted after completion of related actions let us now understand the principle of rational subgrouping in control charts the objective is to detect the assignable causes as quickly as possible with least cost a recommended strategy to achieve this is rational subgroups the sample size should be chosen so that opportunities for variation among the units within a subgroup are small this means that variation within subgroup is random or inherent this inherent process variation is due to common causes only in control charts the inherent variation is compared with variation between subgroups to identify the presence of assignable causes the sample size or subgroup size should be large enough to capture the chance cause variation but should be small enough so that it is not affected by assignable or special causes therefore in control charting subgroups are chosen with consecutive pieces produced from a process wherein the possibility of presence of assignable causes or special causes is less and such subgroups are chosen in a small period of time relatively small period of time so what should be the subgroup size in x bar r charts typical sample size initially selected is 4 or 5 from each process stream this is only a guideline and not for specific process for a specific process the sample size may be more than this one process stream means one spindle or one die cavity or one tool etc however this could be decided considering that no special causes are likely to affect the pieces within a sample or subgroup subgroup sizes or sample sizes lower than 4 are not generally preferred as the applicability of central limit theorem becomes questionable that is assumption of averages following normal distribution may not be strictly valid minimum 25 subgroups should be plotted before calculation of control limits one more important concept that we need to understand is over adjustment over adjustment means adjusting the process frequently whenever the process output deviates from the target this means that process is adjusted even if there is no assignable cause present that is only variation due to common causes is present it has been shown by statisticians and using tools like nelson funnel that variation increases if process is adjusted in absence of assignable causes thus adjustment should be done when the process mean is shifted as signaled by the control chart x bar and standard deviation charts these are very similar to average and range charts and must be used instead of x bar and range charts when the subgroup size is 9 or more because for larger subgroup sizes range is not an appropriate measure of variation standard deviation is used as a measure of variation within subgroups instead of range factors for calculation of control limits are different and shown in the table of constants which was shown earlier in the excel exercise interpretation rules are same as x bar and range charts viewers may like to try an exercise to plot x bar and s charts for the cylinder head data which was shown in the excel application example thanks for watching this video hope you found it worth watching please subscribe to institute of quality and reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on reliability engineering six sigma and statistical quality control click the subscribe and bell icon for getting intimations on the future videos